Uh, hi there. Uh, it's time to start uh, this presentation. Uh, this presentation is introduction of Nova REST of API, uh, Nova V2.1 API. It's uh, one of big new feature uh, of Kiloris. Uh, we have worked for this API two years, and we are glad to release it. In this, pre in this presentation, I will explain its overview. Uh, here is uh, this presentation agenda. We'll skip. Uh, at the first, we'd like to, uh, we'd like to introduce ourselves. Uh, my name is Kenichi Omichi from NEC Japan. Uh, the, I have joined the OpenStack <coughs> committee since 2012, and uh, now I am a core developer of both Nova and Tempest projects. And uh, I'm, I, I'm working to improve Nova API on both project side. Uh, that's all from me. Uh, so, can you introduce yourself, yeah, Mansa? Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ghansiam Man. I am a software developer from NEC. I joined the community in 2012, and I'm an active contributor in NOAA, mainly development of V2.1 API. And I'm a core developer of uh, Tempest. So we'll start with the first uh, brief introduction of REST API and the, how OpenStack uses the REST API. So REST API representational state transfer API. This is the software architecture style which provides you the guidance uh, and the best practice uh, to creating the scalable web services. And uh, mainly it provides it provide the CRUD operation with method and the URI. So, for example, you have the get v1 and resources. So, get you have the method name, and the in the resources you can have the two part. One is the base, and another is the resources you want to specify for your operation. So, for CRUD, one is the creating the new resource. You can use the post method, and uh, you can have the resource in your URIs. For reading the resource, uh, one is you have the list of doing the resources. You can use the get method and the resources in the URI. And uh, to show the per, uh, detail of a particular resources, the method is same get. And the, in URI, you can specify the identity of the resources, which you want to get the detailed. And for updating the resources, you can use the put method and resource and the ID of the resources you want to update. And to delete the resource, same way method is going to be used as delete, and the URI as the resource and the ID of resources. So now OpenStack services through REST APIs. So all the OpenStack projects like NOAA, Keystone, Glance, Cinder, they provide their interfaces or their uses through the REST APIs. For example, in NOAA, when you, you want to, user want to create the new resource, they have the REST API for having the post method with resource name as server. Listing the server, they can use the get method and reach servers in the URI. For keystone, adding a get endpoint, listing the endpoints, you can use the REST APIs. Similarly, for glance, cinder, creating the images, creating the volume, listing the volumes. So all the OpenStack project, they provide the REST API for their uses. This is the how client uh, use the REST API for OpenStack Cloud. Uh, if we talk about client, one we can think is Horizon, the OpenStack dashboard. They just directly call the REST APIs. And uh, there is the commands or Python clients. So all the commands, they make the call to the REST APIs of particular component, like Keystone, then NOAA, or Glance. Other is the application directly can use the REST API and then they can get all the features provided by the OpenStack projects. So this is very important for OpenStack to support the REST APIs. Now we'll talk about the NOAA v2.1 APIs. So NOAA, so basically NOAA provides uh, 
two version of REST APIs. One is the V2 and another is V2.1. So both APIs are available on different endpoints. So slash V2 provide you the access to the V2 APIs and slash V2.1 provide you the access to V2.1 APIs. Both have the implementation code different and uh, V2.1 is the newer and their status is current and V2.1 status is supported. And the new feature is supported only in V2.1. In V2, new features are frozen. So if you want to add any new feature or you want to do any changes in the API's interfaces in request or response, you have to do in the V2.1 APIs through micro version, which we'll talk about uh, later. Now this is a very short but very, you can say the difficult summary of V2.1. Mm -hmm. So one is it, it is the V2 compatibility. But this is very important for V2.1. It is totally compatible with the V2 APIs. There is no change in interfaces, mm -hmm. either of the type of request or response parameters. There is nothing changed. So client or user using the V2 APIs not going to break if they are going to use for the V2.1. Everything is going to be similar. But plus, it has the validation. It is the most important feature for V2.1. It has the input validation. So if, uh, for example, client using the API is wrongly, they pass the extra attribute in request, or they pass something different type in the request. So V2, sometimes they used to ignore those uh, invalid parameters or sometimes it leads to the internal server errors. So that thing is enhanced in the V2.1 with the input invalidation. So whenever this occurs, when users are using the API wrongly, so at the API level only validation happens and user get the correct uh, error message. Something, okay, you're using this API wrongly, you can correct this way, this way. And uh, next is the micro version, as I talked, uh, like new feature or any API changes now has to go with the micro version. It is the versioning of how you introduce the changes in existing API or how you introduce the new APIs. This will be going to be explained by Kenichi. So now Kenichi will explain all these three features in details. Thank you. Uh, as Man San explained, uh, V2.1 APIs, V2 compatibility, validation and micro versions. So I'd like to explain each uh, feature since this slide. The first feature is V2 compatibility. So uh, V2 has been used since 2011. So we have already used uh, V2 API for years. Uh, there is a lot of SDK using OpenStack API, user can use their, uh, user can use this SDK for implementing their own applications to operate OpenStack. So there is a bunch of applications which use V2 API in the world. In this situation, if backward incompatible change happened on V2, uh, many applications will be broken. So backward incompatibility is very important for us. As Mansan said, there is two endpoints for V2 and V2.1, like slash V2 and slash V2.1. Uh, V2, slash V2, uh, Slash V2 is the uh, default endpoint of Nova API. In Kilo, V2 is, w V2 is working on this default endpoint. So incompatible change does not happen on this default endpoint. So we can use existing application without any changes on Kilo also. Uh, we can switch the endpoint to uh, V2.1 V2 like this. Uh, V2.1 
works like V2 as the default behavior. So backward incompatible change, backward incompatible change does not happen even if switching the endpoint to slash V2.1 as the default behavior. So we can use uh, existing application without any change on V2.1 API also. So next feature is validation. Uh, we faced a lot of problem on V2 input validation. It was easy, easy that internal error happened if uh, clients send a malformed request because V2 API does, did not have uh, enough uh, validation in many cases. As a result, operating cost was very high. For example, I'd like to uh, pick, uh, pick up some bug here. One of the most popular API is create a server API. This uh, API uh, contains uh, parameter metadata. This, param this parameter type should be uh, object type, but uh, if client, client send a string value instead of object type, uh, internal error happened. So, and the error message does not uh, contain any reasons. So, as a result, a cloud operator needed to investigate the problem and fix these errors. And the user also cannot understand what, what is wrong and what should do for fixing this problem. So uh, to solve this problem, V2.1 API implements uh, input validation framework. On this framework, uh, all parameters should be defined with types and format. Based on these parameter definition, V2.1 API denies malformed requests. So this behavior is similar to um, white, white list access control. On V2.1 API, uh, valid input pattern are defined and nobody rejects malformed requests which are against these patterns. So uh, as a merit of this framework, uh, we can avoid internal error in many cases and the error response contains the reason with con uh, consistent uh, message format. And the user user can know the reason and fix their own problem easily. So V2.1 validation can reduce operating costs. So last feature is micro versions. Micro version is a API versioning mechanism. And on this mechanism, you micro version are generated for each API changes. So all API changes will be, uh, will appear uh, as new micro version. V2.1 uh, API contains multiple uh, continuous micro versions. And uh, uh, the first micro version is V2.1. So uh, there is a small confusion here. Um, V2.1 API contains a micro version V2.1 API, V2.1. This micro version is default and V2 compatible. Uh, when changing the micro version V2.1, V2.2 is generated. So V2.2 is V2.1 plus some changes based on the same manner uh, V2.3 is V2.2 plus some 
changes like that. So, and the uh, application can specify a uh, micro version in uh, request header. And uh, in this slide, application specify a V2.2 here. Uh, so Nova takes a V2.2 action. And uh, so important thing is that uh, the end point is the same between micro versions. So uh, even if uh, specified V2.2, end point is still V2.1. So, uh, so we don't need to switch the endpoint between micro versions, and uh, instead uh, we need to specify a micro version in uh, request header. Uh, current V2 contains interface bar like Warong status code, uh, inconsistent URIs, and so on. But it was very difficult to fix them because, because of backward incompatibility. Micro version, micro version mechanism allow, to, allow us to fix them. Backward incompatibility, backward incompatibility change should happen with new micro version. And the default micro version is V2.1. And the existing application does not, uh, don't specify a micro version. So Nova, Nova takes V2 compatible action for existing API applications. In addition, we will fix them with small, small changes to avoid a single big impact to user. Uh, so micro version mechanism will make uh, Nova API more consistent and beautiful. Uh, in Kilo, three micro versions are uh, implemented. The first micro version is V2.1. This micro version is default and V2 compatible API. And uh, the in input validation has been implemented since uh, this, this micro version. Uh, based on V2.1, V2.2 is implemented. Uh, on this micro version, a uh, new parameter is added to KPI API response, and some invalid status code of KPI API are fixed. The status code of KPI are changed like this. Uh, 200 to 201, 202 to 204. Awesome. Uh, so these changes are backward incompatible changes, uh, but uh, we have decided these changes uh, because uh, key pair operation is synchronous. So 201 created and 204 no content uh, more accurate. We have an uh, API working group for building consistent API design for all OpenStack projects. And uh, these, these changes are based on uh, API working group guideline. Last, uh, last micro version of Kilo is V2.3. Uh, new New parameter added to show server API for standalone EC2 API service. On Liberty also, we have many blueprints which require API changes. So the number of micro version will be, will increase, will continue increasing. Uh, the um, micro version history is described this file Sorry, too long. And so this file will help for catching uh, micro version history. 
the main feature of V2.1 uh, mentioned. So here is how to use V2.1 API. Uh, here I'd like to show the outline of usage of uh, with this diagram. As I said on previous slide, the default endpoint is V2, not V2.1. So to use V2.1, we need to switch the endpoint from default to V2.1. Um, the, to use micro version, uh, we need to switch the endpoint as the same as previously because a micro version is implemented on V2.1 API. Uh, in addition, we need to specify a micro version in request header like this. Uh, so, at as the first, we need to know the cloud support V2.1 and the supported micro versions. Uh, the Nova uh, version list co command works for that. Uh, if input, uh, if the command output includes the uh, ID uh, V2.1 and its status is current like that, the cloud support V2.1. And uh, the supported micro version is des described on here, uh, minimum version and uh, this version. And uh, uh, this version means uh, maximum micro version. So on this sample, uh, this cloud supports uh, micro version V2.1 V2.2 and V2.3. Uh, one note is that this uh, Nova version list command is uh, was broken recently, and the problem is fixed on the latest Py Nova Python client, which released last week. So please use it. Uh, please use the latest uh, Python Nova client for it. Uh, after knowing the cloud support V2.1 API, we need to switch the endpoint to V2.1. If using Nova command, please try, try adding uh, server type compute V2.1 to uh, Nova command. Uh, on this sample, uh, debug option is added also. So uh, this debug option is useful for checking uh, V2.1 works on Nova side. On this sample, uh, base URI is switched to V2.1, and uh, here is the response. And uh, this response contains a uh, uh, micro version Heta here. So on this sample, uh, micro version does not specify. So on Nova side, uh, the micro version V2.1 default is uh, default works. Uh, so on Nova command, there is no way to specify a micro version that is work in progress now. So I hope this feature will be uh, implemented soon. Uh, for application and SDKs, uh, uh, SDKs uh, micro version can be specified this header. And here is the micro version. If not specifying a micro version, Nova takes V2 compatible action, as I say. And if uh, specifying a special key latest, uh, Nova takes maximum micro version, uh, micro version action. Uh, this keyword is useful for 
uh, development most, in most cases. And uh, it is better to avoid specify this keyword on production environment uh, because, uh, because uh, sometimes micro version uh, contain backward incompatible changes. And if, uh, if uh, cloud, uh, if uh, up, update, uh, upgrading cloud environment, uh, the latest micro version also is increased, and sometimes the micro version contain backward incompatible changes. So, if uh, if application does not care about that, uh, application will be broken. So my recommendation is specifying a certain micro version instead of the uh, keyword latest and uh, increasing a uh, specified micro version after checking micro version history. Uh, now there is some going development items here shows two main items. The first item is uh, switching to default endpoint to V2.1. Uh, the default endpoint slash V2 will be switched to V2.1 in Liberty, like this. So after Liberty, application can still work without any changes because V2 compatibility. And V2.1 validation works as a default. Application can specify a micro version without switching the endpoint. In long term, we will remove the, this V2 implementation code to reduce uh, maintenance cost in the community. Uh, I cannot say when it's happened at this time. Uh, second item is to relax V2 input validation. Uh, V2.1 validation works based on the parameter definition. And uh, if application, con application contain a bug which passed uh, undefined parameter in a request. In this case, V2 just ignored it and used the available parameter values. But V2.1 denies such request and return return error response instead. Uh, we guess some application contain this kind of problem in the real world because Tempest also did it. Uh, V2.1 validation possibly breaks some applications which uh, contain this kind of problem. Uh, that is validation issue around V2.1. Uh, now there is a proposal to relax the validation from John Garbat, Nova PTL. And on this proposal, if client does not specify a micro version, Nova does not deny a request, even if uh, the request contain undefined parameters. If specifying a micro version, uh, Nova denies the such request. So uh, the validation against undefined parameter does not work for existing application. I think uh, this idea is very nice, and uh, we are going to implement it in the uh, Liberty cycle. So after Liberty, V2.1 API will be more easier to be uh, used on production environment. Uh, here is a su summary of this presentation. So uh, V2.1 API is uh, V2 compatibility, validation, and micro, uh, micro versions. 
with V2.1, uh, with V2 compatibility, we can use uh, existing application without any changes. With uh, validation, we can avoid internal error in many cases, and we can reduce operating costs. Uh, with micro version mechanism, a new feature uh, has been implemented on V2.1 only. And after Liberty, after Liberty uh, V2.1 API will be more easier to be used. Uh, we will uh, continue working for making V2.1 API better in Liberty. Uh, the, the, at the end of uh, this presentation, I'd like to mention about Chris Yo. Uh, as is so on Jonathan Bryce's keynote uh, today, uh, the Kilo, Kilo release is de dedicated to memory of Chris. Uh, two months ago, uh, Chris passed away from us. Uh, he was a leader of Nova API development in community and he designed and implement uh, a lot of V2.1 API code and uh, mentored, mentored to many new developers, including me. Uh, the first time I met him was Hong Kong Summit. Uh, this picture is that. I started working for Nova Validation Development uh, at that time, uh, but I was worried about how to make the development proceed. Uh, he gave me uh, important advice at the summit, and uh, we could go over to the concern, and uh, the validation framework is integrated into V2.1 now. He, uh, he, he was a very kind guy, and uh, he, helped me, he helped many people even, if, uh, even after his sick. Uh, my hope was uh, this presentation was done with him together, and uh, I could not imagine uh, we needed to use this picture like this. Uh, so new feature will make uh, Nova API consistent and beautiful uh, as he hoped. Uh, so making, uh, making better API is one thing we can do for his speed. Uh, we'd like to continue this thing in Liberty also. Uh, I'm glad if many people start using V2.1 API soon to moving forward together. Uh, this, uh, that is all from my, our presentation. Thank you for coming today. Uh, we have two minutes around left, so if you have any question. Okay. So one question regarding the endpoint and the validation. So do you guys have any plans of exposing from the endpoint 2.1 the end the JSON schema which could be used on the customer side to validate the request before it hits the API or any validation that okay. happened on the <coughs> server side or the side? So you mean the having the validation on the client side yeah, itself so first? Okay. Okay. So we do have the all the request schemas present in the Nova trees. So client can use those schemas for their validation. And uh, the part is like uh, we are going to have one more feature like JSON Home, which provide you the link to the JSON schema for prospending APIs. So client can use that and have the validation on their side itself. 
So maybe in Liberty, Tomichi mm. uh, San is working on that. Yeah. So maybe in Liberty it will be released. Having the performance between with validation uh, and without. Not, not yet. Uh, we don't have right now actually, but mm. that's a good idea we can have. If, uh, but uh, we don't think there will be more uh, difference between the performance because uh, the validation in V2 used to happen in the Python code many times, except the extra attributes being validated uh, in the JSON schema and all. And we have moved the Python code validation into the JSON schema validation. So which I think should be the faster. But uh, we can have the such uh, data of performance. The Okay, so till now actually we have not done such a validation, but we can try that one and we can even uh, have those uh, for the uses that will be good. Yeah. To that point, there are gate jobs that run in V2. Are we even running gate jobs on V2 anymore? Uh, yeah, V2.1 we run. So we're running V2.1 and V2, yes. and if there were actually negative differences, we would have known why not. Yeah, so both jobs time is almost same, so I don't think any huge difference. Yes. Last one. Thanks for your tribute to Chris. Um, I just had a question about the, um, the Kilo release. So you've got V2.1, V2.2, and V2.3. Um, I'm trying to understand the V2.2 because 2.3 presumably contains the change in 2.2. I'm just wondering, mm -hmm. like with Liberty, are we going to have like four or five? So basically, what all we introduce in V2.2 and 2.3? Uh, you, are, you mean what all we introduced, the changes between V2.1 and V2.2? Well, I guess what I'm asking, so, so this is the first release of 2.1, mm -hmm. and that's the compatibility one, so that makes sense that we can yeah. have that. But then why didn't we just have 2.2 that contained both those changes you described, the uh, type to the key pair response and also the uh, mm -hmm. show server response? Mm -hmm. Because, right, we're just trying to track how, how the micro version Okay, how many micro versions per release? Uh, yeah, it depends on how many changes we introduce. These are like, as people consume this more often than just the release, right? So as soon as we push. But you, you destabilize between releases, so. No. No. People deploy out of master constantly. So as soon as we push something to master, it could be published, could be consumed by somebody. So yeah. the next thing is the next thing. So, so each one. Get its own micro watch. And Okay, I think we are done at time. Thank you, everyone, for attending.